we were doing testimonies the other, I think this was last Wednesday. Uh, we, were, we were, had a service of testimonies and obviously testimonies are good. You guys should be giving testimonies, your testimony, not somebody else's, that's gossip. Um, um, you should be giving testimony as often as possible because this is where, this is where the Holy Spirit meets people who are not necessarily in church. So we're doing this, and my motive is more because we're recording it so we can get uh, stuff for our website. We have wearebeastmode.com um, and .org and .net. So uh, we're building this website, and we need content. So I'm like, oh, it's better to get a testimony than to listen to what I have to say. You know, I would rather have the teenagers sharing the gospel of what's happening in their individual lives. So <clears throat> we're giving testimonies, and one of the girls gets up there. Uh, Elia, can I can I say your name? All right. So <laughs> it could it could or it could not have been Elia. Um, and she's just sharing her testimony, and it is it's going on the website anyway. Like people are gonna see it. We'll do the little digital thing out with you. And change, change your voice. It's like, my name is Elliot. Like, whatever. Um, <laughs> so one of the things, well, basically what she's describing is we're not even really worthy to be involved with what God's doing. We're not. Nobody's really worthy for any of it, you know. But he invites us in anyway. And she's really explaining the magnitude for her. Like, it's really hitting her. Why am I even here? Like, I don't deserve to witness this, to experience this. But he lets us, you know. And this is not, that continues to speak to me since, since last week. Because I'm like, man, there's so many things that this applies to. I'm not even worthy. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve, we didn't earn any of it, not just salvation. Salvation is the big one. They go, oh, we don't deserve it, but we got in. Yay, I got a golden ticket, right? <laughs> Willy Wonka? All right. um, that's the big one. But we don't deserve any of this small stuff either. He just does it because he loves us. And this is the relationship. So <clears throat> the topic of today is, is basically this is just a forward almost uh, to preface what we're doing at the conference. There's no way I'm going to bottle up our conference in 20 minutes and give you everything, but this is kind of our beginning, what leads us into chasing God's heart. <clears throat> um, so I, we're going to go somewhere. Um, and it's going to seem like a tangent because that's my life. And for most of us, I think our lives are tangents. So, um, yeah, uh, to me, life is a tangent because you have a direction that you go, I'm going this way. And God is like, ha, cool. That's true, but you're not going like that. I need you to do some things. So. This is about chasing God's heart, but it's really about our identity, who we are, how we're created. We seek love. We seek attention, whether it's negative or, you know, like you have those friends or family members or kids around you or whatever. They're negative attention seekers, you know. You had that older brother, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. Like, you want to just want to hug or what is going on? Like, get away from me. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Okay, so you might have wives that do that too. Sorry. Um, that's negative attention seeking, but it's, we're just seeking attention. That's it. We don't know how to do it correctly. We don't really know how to do anything correctly. Uh, it's amazing that we get out of the house with our pants on forward, you know. Um, <laughs> well. So we seek love, all of us. All of us seek love. We seek attention. 
We all want love so bad. We want acceptance. And this is not, I'm not saying like, oh, with God. Like, again, I'm not talking about salvation because that's a larger picture. Um, I'm saying in life, with everyone that we come in contact with, we would love acceptance. That's what we, oh, they like my sweater. You know, and you feel better about yourself, you know. <clears throat> we want companionship. We want identity. We want all of these things. This is like, these are the bases, bases of like just walking around, engaging, interacting with people. Right. It's, but you connect with somebody, and then when they start accepting you, you're like, oh, my gosh, these are, this is, these are my people. I need to be around them. Acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. So we have a Christian idea where we go, oh, acceptance. We're the family. We're the body. We call, come in, and sit in chairs and face the same direction. You know, like, I'm teasing. It's just a joke. Sometimes I feel like I have to give a joke just to warm up because 9 a.m. is so cold. I mean, it's actually like Hawaii outside right now, but yeah, I looked, anyway. See, I just cut that tangent, wow. Thank you, I love you too. Look, it all ties around. Um, acceptance. <clears throat> That's, we have this idea where we all come to church and we all, we're part of the body because we come to the same church and because they said they like my shoes and whatever, you know, I got a new haircut and they noticed or whatever, you know. So these are the small things that are, wow, I need acceptance and then this person has accepted me. This is why, honestly, we find ourselves and everyone finds themselves in different groups, and you're like, how did I end up here? I don't know if I'm a Democrat or a Republican or um, wear those little fez hats or whatever. I'm part of the, what are they called? The Elks Lodge or like all these random, like, what does that do? Like, what are these like old people gangs or whatever? Like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys even do over there? You know? So, I mean, sorry, sorry. Not old people, old people is politically incorrect. I'm not supposed to say that. Season. These are season gangs. These are seasoned establishments. Well seasoned. All right. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is acceptance. This is companionship. This is not a Christian thing. This is a life thing. It's so much larger than like, oh, you're not a Christian. You don't understand companionship. And it's like, don't do that. Like, this is life. This is why people, this is why we get up and interact with people. So know that somebody's interacting with you looking for acceptance and companionship. Um, to take it a little step further, our identity comes out of our relationships. Nobody likes to admit that because we're so individual we do our own thing, we're independent, we're Californians, and we don't show up on time because we don't need to or whatever, you know. Or we're Christian Californians, like, oh, I operated in the spirit, you know. Like, Weren't you supposed to be there? I was in the spirit. No, you were late on the freeway. Yeah, that's it, you know. And you're 10 minutes late and you get a phone call, like, hey, I'm going to Starbucks, you want anything? Like, no, I want you to be here 10 minutes ago. Anyway, <clears throat> so my little, pet peeves. All right, so our identity is from those that we love. You start with this single identity, kind of, and you grow up and you have all your opinions and all your things or whatever, and then you get married. That's the person that you love so much that you would do anything for, that you would, you know, whatever, wear a pink bow tie to this wedding or whatever, you know, you know, like whatever. You would do anything for this person. And then you're one. Your identity is in the person that you love. And then, <clears throat> then you have kids. And then your identity changes again and it's in the ones that you love.
because your identity becomes mom or dad or whatever. And honestly, people will even see you on the street and like, oh, you're so-and-so's mom. Or like, you're so-and-so's dad. Like, I have a name. No, you don't. No, you know. Yeah. You're awesome. You buy all the Hot Pockets or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have no idea, self identity. You're not an individual anymore. Like, your identity is in the ones that you love. Your kids. You don't like hockey. But why does your car smell like hockey? Why do you drive all around and watch all the games and buy all the stuff? And, like, no, mom, you don't understand. No, they're new pads that just came out. Like, what? what are you talking about? You know, all of these things, you're like, oh, man, this is so not me. But you don't care because this is your identity. Your identity is so connected to the people that you accept and the people that accept you. We're created like this. Adam and Eve were not two separate people. I mean, they were, but they weren't. They were like, you never just talk about Eve. Well, what would you have to say? You never just talk about Adam. Well, it's just Adam until Eve came. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't even know, like, the Bible doesn't talk about dates and times of, as far as how long they were in uh, the garden or how long Adam spent on the earth before he realized, I'm bored. I'm alone. I'm giving identity to all these other things, and I don't even know who I am. I need companionship. I need acceptance. What was it, like eight minutes or whatever? <laughs> before God is like, oh my gosh, you need a wife or something, because <sighs> like, I keep telling you to put your socks in the dirty clothes. You need a wife. You need a wife. Yeah. Um, <sighs> our identities are even in our hobbies. It's even in the things that, the things that we love. I'm a soccer player, or I'm a singer, or, you know, like these are the things you identify. <clears throat> if people could wear name tags and it would not be socially awkward, they would. Not with their name on it, with all the cool things that they're into. You know what I mean? This is what Facebook is for, or whatever. Like, look at my name tags. You know, like we're all like Girl Scouts with little badges all over the place, or whatever. Like, I don't know. This is how we identify ourselves. Like, look what I love. I love Jesus. I love books. I love spelunking or whatever. Like, you know, people are into weird stuff, and I just pray for them. You, know? <laughs> you wanted to jump out of an airplane? It's not on fire? You know, like, uh, sp spelunking. Yeah, I don't know, like, it's going into caves or something. I don't know. Yeah, getting into stuff that you shouldn't be into. Just sit in the corner and pray. All right, so... <laughs> <clears throat> Marilyn is so awake this morning. So we desire love, and that love leads to our identity. We're not supposed to just have a single identity. You know, like, even, I just want to say this, because this is, everybody thinks they grow out of being a teenager, but they don't. Uh, you're just a teenager with a beard, or... All teenagers talk about are their friends. Those are the people that accept them. Oh my gosh, and like, oh my gosh, and like, oh my gosh, and like. And you're sitting at home thinking, I didn't teach them oh my gosh or like, but they just keep putting it in all their sentences. I don't know where this is coming from. Oh my gosh, like that, oh my gosh, like you wouldn't understand. You know, like, oh my gosh. This is. You're my best friend. Oh, I love you, Bay. Like, what's a bay? Get out of here. A bay is a body of water. Anyway, so <clears throat> we become one with the people we love and the people we pursue in love. 
So if you're wondering how we're even beginning to chase after God's heart, it's really a question about who do you love? Do you love God? Is that your interest? Is that your, oh my gosh, like I can't live without Jesus, like, oh, he's my BFF, like, oh my God. You know what I mean? I'm just using that as a silly example, but seriously, I continue, as I continue to live life, I continue to understand more and more what Paul is talking about, where he's going, I wish all of you could be like me. And I know it's very, Paul is a special character. I wish you could all be like me, which is basically like, don't get married or have kids or focus on anything else. Don't even care about your occupation. You know, this is Paul. Who cares about anything? Let's just chase after God. Well, I could do that and be a celebrity rapper. I could do that, Paul. I know, dang, I can't, man. You know, Jesus didn't allow me to do that. I'm still, we're still talking it out. <laughs> it's, it's still, like, are you sure? Rock, paper, scissors, Jesus. He does always win, I know. It's like, mm. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> do we really love God? And I know the very Christian answer is yes. Oh, yeah, I love God. I love God. And, but does he bring you to change? Does he bring, do you forget what time it is because you've been hanging out with him? Do you find yourself calling people like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was hanging out with Jesus. I lost track of time. Because that's what we do with friends or with family or with hobbies or whatever it is that we really care about, that we really love, that our hearts are connected to. Part of the chasing God's heart, your heart has to want to be there in the first place. Your heart has to already attach. And of course, scripturally, like <clears throat> God calls us before we even start calling him. But understand that there's an idea that we look to the scripture, and I was talking about this the last time I was up here, you know, just with Ananias and, and his wife and seeing people have an idea. They see something that other people are doing, they're like, oh, I want that. You want the result of that. You're not in that relationship, you know? So sometimes we go, I want to chase God's heart. I'm going to start chasing God's heart. And you're like, Who's, who is God? I don't even know that guy, you know? I kind of know him, but Imagine if somebody started chasing after you so intimately the way your parents are intimate with you or the way your spouse is intimate with you. Or, you know, imagine somebody you don't really know just walking up and just sliding over and like, hey, so I was thinking like, oh my gosh, what just happened right now? Who are you? Creeper. So I'm just sorry. But you know what I mean? I'm, I don't think Jesus is going creeper, but all, but... It, like, the creep, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll come with, like, a dictionary of <laughs> PD's lingo next time. Sorry, Marilyn. She's like, creeper? What is a creeper? Uh, <clears throat> but to chase after God's heart, it's, you have to start, like, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the rules. I just love him. I'm so infatuated with God. He's like a crush, if that makes sense. Because with a crush, you, there's so much buildup. And you don't really see anything else. You're like, oh my gosh, oh, they never talked to me before. But I am so infatuated with that person. This is where we need to be. Something that Cindy Jacobs said when she was here <clears throat> that is been with me since then, she says, if you're not more intimate and more passionate and more excited about God than the first day you accepted Jesus Christ, you're backsliding. I was like, what? I'm like, well, man, oh, okay. I got work to do. I got to go back. But you imagine that in a relationship. If you're not more excited about your spouse than the day you first met, 
if you don't have a stronger, more intimate, more passionate relationship with your parents from the time you were six to now when you're 17, or from 17 to 30, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, if I'm still in a relationship like I was six years old, like, what am I doing? Am I maturing? Am I growing? Is this a relationship or this is just, what I, like, I don't even know what you call that. So I'm, I keep, I feel like I have to prep and understand what it is to chase after God's heart. We have to get into a place where, you know, the Bible suggests, like, our identity is in Christ. I say suggest, but it's, like, all over the place. Our identity is in Christ. But it's not a name badge identity. It's not like, hey, guys, start calling me P.D. Christ or whatever. You know, like, that's, that's awkward. Yes, that's like a fan. Yeah, I realize people, you don't, you're not mic'd. People can't hear what you say. I'm like, yes, good. No? Nobody? Like a fan. I had, um, I'll skip that. Never mind. Um, there are people at times in life that you'll recognize they just attach to you. And, you know, as an adult, they'll call you mom or dad or, you know, or they're like, oh, man, they're my best friend. And you're like, I don't know what. I don't know them. You know, or like I met them twice, and then they show up dressed just like you. Or like, oh, how do you do that? You know, I memorize your closet. And normally you wear these on Wednesdays. Like, wow, what's going on? Like, now this is like a stalker. This is not a change of identity. This is like your identity has not nothing to do with your name tag or what you call yourself. Our identity is not Christian because... We call ourselves Christian. That's not why we're Christians. We're Christians because we act and we live and we're actually in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Years ago, people would say, oh, you're not a, just because you hang out in a garage, you're not a car. Well, it is true. I tried it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. If I did, pray for me afterwards. No, um, you're not. No matter how much time you spend telling people you're a car, you're not. People just smile and nod so you'll go away. All right, I'm just trying to eat my food. Like, no, but seriously, check me out. Like, okay, uh, that's, cool. that's so nice, you know. And a lot of times we get into this position where we go like, who are we? We're Christians. We're Christians, yeah. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. Or like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, People are just smiling and nodding. Okay, whatever. Whatever, you put that name tag on. It's, it's different when you enter into a relationship with God where you go like, man, I don't really have all the answers. There's not a big rule book. This book is not even a rule book. It's just, I get to just find out more about you. It's not a rule book. It's like your diary. And you said, here, read my diary. That's what the Bible is. That's God's diary. That's not a rule book. Learn who he is because you're infatuated with him. Because it's like you have this crush that you're just like, oh, I, I just keep losing focus on everything else about life. And I keep moving toward this guy. And he's so amazing. We do this with, with like Pastor Brian just said, like a fan. We do this with celebrities all the time. And some of us can name facts about celebrities. I'm like, that's stalking. Like, I don't know. That's really, why do you know that? You know, do you know his favorite food? Like, have you ever met this guy? No. But I drive by his favorite restaurant all the time. Like, okay. Do you know Jesus? No, but I drive by church all the time. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but I sit there in the same room as him. And I stare and don't blink, like, what? That's, you know, Jesus is the judge, and I think he will issue, never mind, all right. The thing is, <clears throat> I'm excited about chasing God's heart. The reason for this title is because I look at David, and when David was called a man after God's own heart, he wasn't a man. 
He's a kid. That one. That guy is a man after God's own heart. What? You mean my little dude? Well, he hasn't even, he doesn't have any muscles yet. He doesn't even know who he is yet. All I know is he's a man after God's own heart. His identity was in the person that he loved. That's what we're created to do. Not with other, I mean, yes, with other people, which is what actually makes up a body. The body of Christ is not because we all face the same direction and listen to people speak. The body of Christ is because we connect with each other. Adam and Eve were not in the garden. Like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. All right, I'm going to name these people or these raccoons. I named them raccoons. You name those over there. Like, we don't need to talk. But God will meet with us in the cool of the day separately. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is weird. That would be really weird. We're called the body of Christ because we connect because we accept each other, because we open up to one another and we build those relationships. Then separately and together, we have this relationship with Jesus Christ, a relationship. The identity thing comes after. That's the result of being in love with Jesus Christ, that you gain your identity. The fruits of the Spirit, you can't just go and grab them. It's not like the grocery store. You can't just go grab and purchase the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit is the result. <laughs> Some people try. You know, like, this is just an avocado. Like, yeah, it's not anything. But, sorry, I got one laugh. Uh, thank, thank you. It was a sympathy laugh, but I'll take it. You can't grab the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit grows out of the way you live a lifestyle. A lifestyle, like not a diet. A lifestyle. I want to be very spiritually healthy for the next three months, and then I'm going to feel so much better. And then what happens after three months? Well, then I go back to being a demon. What do you, like, you know what I'm saying? That's a diet. I need to be so skinny, and I'm going to be healthy for three months, because summer's coming. And then what? Then I just eat trash until May. Till May, then I drink water from Mexico, throw up for a month, and I'm, hey, you know. Sorry, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I'm just saying, you know. If you got anything out of this word, don't let it be that. Uh, <laughs> Petey said, summer's coming. Um, that's a diet mindset, not a lifestyle. A lifestyle says, what do I need? What do I, what do I really, what? There's something that I need to take in that's going to change everything inside of me so that the outside of me also changes, so that people see the difference. That's a lifestyle. That's a relationship. You know, a diet relationship looks like, hey, oh my gosh, people are looking. I don't want to take a picture with Jesus. I'm like, I just want to be with him all the time. You don't take pictures with the people you see every day. You're like, I know what you look like, go away. <laughs> I'm going to see you again in 15 minutes. I don't take a picture of you. You take the pictures with, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in nine years. You know, I don't want to take pictures with Jesus. I just want to live a lifestyle. Like, I don't have to hold on to this picture because I'll see you again in 15 minutes. Because something's going to happen, and I'm just going to turn and start talking to you. The value is not like, oh my gosh, remember this one time this one thing happened, and I have a picture to prove it. That's not the relationship. So chasing after God's heart, it looks very different because it's a lifestyle change. It's a relationship. Then you're so passionate at that place, we can begin chasing after God's heart. We just have to start with infatuation. We have to start with, 
okay, let me just change my life. Let me just be to exist as, to be. Let me just exist as that guy or that girl that's just in love with Jesus. Well, do you speak in tongues and do you do all this or do you do mm, yes or no or whatever? But I mean, that, those are important, but that's not, the, that's not the everyday little things that matter in a relationship. You know what I mean? Like whether you are you know, you have gifts or anything like that. If you never, and I'm, I'm saying this for somebody, if you never speak in tongues, if you are never given a vision, if you never prophesy, you can still be madly in love with God. He might never use you in the way that you think is, oh, I get the authority or I get to be the awesome superhero that I read about in the Bible or whatever. He might never do that with you. There are so many people that he is passionately in love with that their story is not in the Bible. What'd they do? They just loved him. That's, that was incredible. And when it talks about, oh, and you'll have crowns in heaven and all these things, there's gonna be people I'm like, what did that guy do? Oh my gosh, he's got so many cool crowns and mansions or whatever, Lamborghinis, or I don't know if we need to drive or whatever. Um, you'll never hear their story. And you're like, how do they get all that? They, they're just in love with me in a way that nobody else could understand. There's nobody around to write this down. But our relationship was fire. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, everybody knows about, and we use this all the time. And... You know, every, everybody expects to hear this at a wedding, so I never use it at a wedding. Uh, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love, you know. Like, oh, do that one, it's so sweet, you know. But 13, seven and eight. <clears throat> First Corinthians 13, seven and eight. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things. This is where we need to be with God. Well, I don't know. God never answered my prayer. Then what does that have to do with right here? Believes all things, hopes all things. I don't know. I'm just waiting on God because it's, you know, I'm trying to live my life, but he hasn't done what I asked him to do. It sounds like you're not ready to chase after God's heart. And I say you, I'm talking about all of us, so don't send Pastor Brian an email about how Petey said something wrong. Yeah, Petey said, yeah. You can send it to Brian Rogers at Calvary Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Just in case anybody disagrees with what I'm saying about <laughs> tongues is not the most important thing. Prophecy is not. It's your relationship with Jesus Christ. To chase after someone's heart means I'm trying to do everything that I can do in my life to get your attention, to get your acceptance. I just want to be in your presence, even when technically you're not even talking to me. You know what I mean? Like, what do I have to do? And we watch romantic movies of this all the time, and people are holding up boom boxes, or people are serenading, like, what? That dude knows Spanish guitar? Like, whatever. Everybody knows Spanish guitar in the movies, you know? Yeah. I tried. I don't know Spanish guitar. Um, but we see all these things. We watch all these, these ideas about what is romance? It's chasing after someone's heart. To chase means they're moving in a direction that you are back here, and you're like, I need to catch up. You're going somewhere, and I don't want you to grow and leave me because I want your heart. I'll do anything to get your attention. This is our relationship with God. This is where it needs to be. I will do whatever, God, 
to get your attention. I just want to be with you. This is the introduction to chasing God's heart. I want to be this. I want to open up opportunity for other people to be this. So that's just the beginning. We'll continue Wednesday. I don't expect you to come back there on Wednesday. Uh, you should be out here and love Pastor Brian. I don't even know if Brian's speaking, but love him anyway. I think everybody should greet Pastor Brian with a holy kiss. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that was all encompassing. That represented everyone's holy kiss. Yeah, yeah. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your heart. You have so many things planned for us. You have so much love for us that you want us to chase after you. That you're saying, just take a step and I'll, I'll meet your action. I'll meet you where you are. Lord, I just ask that our desire for you increases. That our priority is you. That we connect with each other in such a way that we can actually be a body, Lord. Not just in this house, but a body of believers in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world, Lord God. That, that we connect with so many that, that you see us as a body, Lord that we see ourselves as a body. And that we take the, the position that we're in, in that body, and then we turn toward you, Lord. If we are the hand and we put our hand to things and we serve and that's who we are, let us do it toward you, Lord. If we are thinkers and creators and, and, and whatever it is, Lord, if we're the feet and we walk the earth, Lord, let us do it unto you, Lord. Let us use our gifts and our talents. Let us use our weaknesses for you, Lord. That we passionately chase after you, Lord God. Lord, I just lift up the K through five, the WWJD ministry uh, with Grace and Matt, Lord God. And I ask that the thing that you have started in your kids, Lord, through this BBS, that it will continue, Lord that the fruit of your investment, the fruit of your relationship, that, that you begin with these kids who might be in kindergarten or pre-K or fifth grade or whatever it is, Lord God, that we see the result of that, that the earth is changed because of what you are doing in their lives, Lord God. And I just lift up the teenagers all the way up to the 90-year-olds that are coming to the conference And I just say, God, have your will. We'll chase after your heart and we'll mess up. And we'll fail. And we'll get things right and we'll get things wrong and whatever. Just, just meet us where we are and have your will with us, Lord God. Whatever attention you give. We're just excited to be in your presence, Lord. We lift up the nations, Lord God, as it is time, 1023, so... I'm just going to lift up the nations, Lord God. I lift up first our nation. As everyone is moving back and forth, trying to decide what is right and what is wrong, Lord, we just want to be in your presence. We want your Holy Spirit to flow freely in this nation. You got so much done, Jesus the short time you are on this earth. We want to be like you. We want to move your kingdom forward, Lord. Whether you have us take over this country and completely change everything to, to your will or not, Lord, we just ask that you give us opportunity to walk this nation and affect and change lives, to grow the kingdom, to bring opportunity. We open ourselves up, say we are open vessels 
ready to be used, Lord God. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit so that we can pour out your Spirit on every piece of earth that we walk on, Lord God. We lift up the London ministry to you, and we lift up uh, Thailand to you as we have people just around the world, Lord God. And I ask that you fill them up with your Holy Spirit, Father. That today and tomorrow look completely different because your Holy Spirit has touched that place. Lord, I just thank you for Marilyn and Carolyn who continue to run the nation's prayer and the nation's ministry, Lord God. And as they take that on, as they bear all things for the nations, Lord, I ask that you fill them up as they continue to pour out, Lord, that they are never dry, that there's never a spiritual drought in their life as a result of pouring out your word, Lord God, that you are abundant, that you are a God of more than enough, and that you're not a favor of men, so if you do it for one, you'll do it for another, Lord. We just step into your presence, God. Thank you for giving us that worship this morning. Your people were on fire. I ask that you meet us there again and again and again and again. We love you. And I thank you for the offering and for the announcements and everything that you're doing with every ministry within the Jubilee House, Lord God. We bless you. We serve you and we honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.